Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons and you advice on how you can improve your miniature painting. We've got loads of awesome entries this week to have a look at, so let's jump straight in and start giving some awesome feedback. First up, we've got Para, who has painted a really cool split armoured scheme assault jump intercessor or assault, you say assault, these assault marine you just call it an assault <laughs> marine it gets it, it gets it done uh yeah really really high contrast scheme obviously with a red with a black um and uh, sort of segmented scheme so half and half or quartered are really difficult to execute so um we're going to talk about the execution of the split that you've done but um but just a visually striking miniature which is just great um so yeah i think a scheme like this is like really really great for tabletop gaming as well it really really stands out something like unique and different 100 percent. um and initially i think like Overall, this model's like really neatly blocked in, which is something that we always like to give kudos for when we see it on these episodes. Um, because I think just that immediate skill of blocking in all of the details in their individual colors without any bleed and it's nice and neat is like, for me, the the first 80%, if that makes sense. Like if if all of the details are in individually segmented into their different colors, like the metallic sea on the Aquila, got the leather and things like that. So that's like a great starting point. And then we could start Definitely. going into like, the refinement, if that makes sense, rather than the actual application of the paint, we can start getting into the nitty gritty of the techniques used, if that makes T sense. Totally. I mean, base coating is is the, is the foundation of all painting on miniatures. And if you don't do that right, then it, it, the end result is not going to look anywhere near as good as you want it to. So, so yeah, so yeah. You, you've done a great job with that. Let's jump in and have a look at the, uh, the, the uh, sort of split scheme. So I, I think you've done a really good effort and job of this. Um, however, it's not strictly 100% centered and that's demonstrated in a couple of areas. So if we look at just uh, the belt buckle, for example, you can see the center line being this split in the buckle here. And obviously your line is is way off of that. Now, I don't know whether you've looked at this visually as you've been looking at it, the angle that you've been looking at it has been straight. What you really should do is break every piece of the armor if you're going to be doing a half and half or quarter scheme and split every single individual piece. So for example, uh, the, the the cod piece, if you want to call it anything here, for example, <laughs> um, and then you've also got the belt buckle. Uh, again, I would follow this, this recessed line down on the belt buckle and across that sort of button part on there as well. Same with the chest. You can also see here, uh, sorry, the, not the chest, same with the sort of like abdomen. It kind of strays off to the left a little bit, whereas it should theoretically be a line like that. So if there, for example, if we move up onto the chest plate, you can see obviously the skull, it's slightly off center on the skull. You want it to be slightly more here because obviously that's the center of the skull. Use the nose indent on the skull to actually mark where the center line would be. On the gorget as well, that will follow. The gorget is this piece of armor here for anyone who doesn't know. That's a, a just bit, that's what that's called. Um, and obviously these two lines are obviously way off of each other. It would be one continuous line that runs up the whole panel, if that makes sense. Um, same with the helmet as, uh, here, as you can see. Obviously, the more you've done really good. So this free breather part here at the front is split perfectly. But then when it goes up onto the head, the first, the bottom piece is bang on in the center, which is where and it should follow up. And you've kind of spilled over onto the right a little bit. And same with the air intake or the sort of like the, the extraction port here on top of the helmet. It, it's, it's way off. And then even on the backpack, as you can see, it's more to the right than it is to the left. So overall, from a distance, it's obviously very, very striking as in the scheme. But then when you when you look at it, obviously, more, a more granular level for every aspect of the armor, it is off quite considerably. And I really would work on that when you're painting it, focus on those individual pieces and work on, work that way and you'll get a much more consistent straight line. Yeah, the line itself is actually really clean. It's not yeah. like there's loads of bleed or anything. It's, yeah, just, it's just the placement of that line. And I think it's easy to throw you off as well because you've got to bear in mind all of these armor plates move because obviously the body moves around with it. So all of these plates aren't necessarily going to be perfectly aligned with each other. Yeah. So try to ignore the sort of overall look and try to think of each individual piece one by one. Yeah. Um, going to just... A, a few more details as well. Um, something I noticed that has been missed is there's some actually some armor ribbing yeah. sort of behind this uh, abdomen plate here, um, which has still been painted red by the looks of things. So I noticed that you've picked it out in like the armpit and presumably in the, like the arms as well and on the back of the legs. You can see it on the leg plate here. Um, but there is actually an additional one there. I think because on this side it's black anyway, yeah. uh, it blends in a little bit more. But on the red got, side. On the red side, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would be, if you're looking at sort of reference material, uh, that for me would be black um, yeah. or at least whatever your armor ribbing color of choice is. Yeah. And, and it just would also make that sort of abdomen plate stand out way more by having that surround of black around it as well. So that's just something to be conscious of. Um, so I want to talk about the plasma pistol. Um, it's one of one of the things that I uh, that I think is really eye catching. Obviously, that, that turquoise contrasting color to the red, which is really, really great. Um, one thing I would say, though, is the gun being red, kind of like the gun gets lost on the red side of the miniature. I'd very much be inclined to paint that black so that you've got high contrast between the black and the red, like you have on the inherently on the marine. Um, but it would just mean that that turquoise will look even brighter because you've got such a dark color next to it. Uh, and also as well, it would just 
it, the gun doesn't get lost on the arm if you follow me. All right? Yeah, um, I think red could have been a cool color choice if it was perhaps held with the other arm on like the black side, so you yeah. could have that like contrasting split scheme exactly. there. Um, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily like a a wrong choice to use red as the casing of the plasma pistol. You see it on a lot of reference material. That is the color that's used. Yeah, but I think doing it with a red armored model model. Yeah, uh, is just yeah, it's a contrast could have been there. Yeah. It would have benefited, I think. No, hundred percent. Yeah, no, I do agree. Um, the 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 other little thing that I'll just chuck in really quickly that because I want to just put this in is obviously the lenses on the head. Uh, you've on the red side, you've blocked it in really well with that white that you put there, but on the black side, it's it's bled quite a bit. Um, something just to, to and I understand why you've used white because it's a completely different color, neutral tone color that will obviously then just just sort of like work with the rest of the scheme. Um, I'd actually be inclined to paint those as green because then that way it would con you'd have really good color relationship between the red armor and the green will look really great on the on the black side as well. So that's just something to chuck in. Yeah, equally, even if you did want to just stick with the white, I think just going in with some black and just painting just a, a neat little sort of fill line yeah. uh, in there just to cut in a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think it would it would help um, yeah. just to sort of sell the, the neatness of the model because everything else, like I say, is blocked in really nice and neatly mm -hmm. and it is segmented really, really nicely. But because you've got because you've got this perfectly painted lens next to it, it makes this look kind of worse than it is. If that actually yeah, makes totally. sense. Yeah, um, totally. And then one final thing, just to round this out uh, in regards to transfers, um, Micro Soul and Micro Set are two scale modeling products that are really really popular with Warhammer for applying transfers. Um, have a look on YouTube for some tutorials on how to use those. Um, if you want to consider picking those up, I think that would really help you to eliminate the visibility of all of this sort of backing material. Failing that, um, just some matte varnish or some satin varnish over the top, applied either with brush or with an airbrush. Um, it helps to make the, the clear backing material uh, sort of vanish and, and blend in because um, it, it, things like this are what sort of break the immersion when you're looking at a miniature. Yeah. You want this to be like a nicely clean applied sort of painted look as if yeah. they'd like painted it on. Um, but when you can see the transfer material, it kind of reminds you, oh yeah, this is a, a miniature that I'm looking at, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then just one final point just to round out all of this. In regards to your edge highlights, uh, I really like the placement and how you've chosen to just do them on some of the upper areas drawing interest uh, into the sort of shoulders and the head and sort of center focal point of the model. That being said, the jump in contrast and saturation on the black is very, very different to how it is on the red. And it means that sort of light, you've got light behaving in two different ways on the same surface, which doesn't really make sense to me. So what I mean by that is you've got this really, really bright, uh, you know, bright gray highlight on the black, which is super, super bold and stark jump, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, but on the red, it's, it's a lot basically, more desaturated. It's a lot more desaturated. Yeah. You've basically done the same highlight mid-tone as the edge highlight, if that makes sense. I would have gone for whatever whatever this is that you've used down here, rather than just using that uh, as the brightest point, this little bit of orange, I would have gone the whole way with that personally. Yeah. And then that would have married the, the saturation and the brightness of the highlights of the red side to the black side. And I think it would have made that miniature look a little bit more cohesive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But all in all, a really, a really good model. Just, just some little granular things, which if you do them, it will just tweak it a bit more. But yeah, really yeah, good. Great effort. Next up, we've got Sinister Plank, who says, finished all but the base. Uh, pretty happy with him, but I'm always keen to go the extra mile. I think I can do better with his face and hair. Yeah, so overall, a really, really well-presented miniature. I think you've done a great job of making everything read as it should do, as in the material that it is or what it's supposed to be. Um, I, I, I will circle back to the hair in, in, in a moment, but a couple of things I just wanted to point out is like, I think all the things that you painted are done nicely. I think one thing that is lacking, I think, are the gems. So, for example, if you have a look at like the the, the, the sort of like the brooch that's just on the upper chest, and if you know the gem in the center there doesn't have any demonstrable sort of highlight stages. Really, there's nothing really there showing that it doesn't read to me like a gem. Um, obviously, it's, it's a diamond. It's got it's got multiple facets. So you've got four facets there, like or little triangles, all pointed into the center. Um, Edge highlight each of those lines, so the four lines and also the perimeter. So you'll have like a like a obviously a diamond shaped out, outer edge highlight, and then you have the cross that goes over the top, and then you just do five little tiny little dots, one in the center, one on each of the corners. And what that will do is just make it look like a gem. If you really want to go a bit more granular on it, then the the facet that's underneath light or this this triangle here, you'd paint this slightly darker, and the other three would be slightly brighter, and it would just show that light is kind of like coming through and refracting, etc. And you can add contrast onto the gem. Um, if you look at the one on the belt of rust as well, so that he's got there, um, it's very dark compared to the one that's on the brooch. Um, you kind of want the gems to be like focal points and add interest. And, you know, if you look at Frostfang, the chain blade as well, you can see obviously there's one, yes, it's behind the hair, it's in shadow a little bit, et cetera, but you can still add a lot more color in there just to add interest to it. It's a, it's a gem, you should make it a bit more prominent on the surface. Uh, but that's one thing that stood out to me massively when I first looked at it. Yeah, and then going to your points, um, you said uh, that the hair and the face was something that you thought you could improve. 
Um, I think the face is actually really, really nicely painted. You've got a lot of variety of tone, shading, highlight stages and whatnot. Um, the teeth are nicely picked out. The eyes are well painted as well. So you've demonstrated a lot of skill with that. So I actually think that the face looks really, really nice. Um, I think where the face is lacking is actually in relation to the hair. So what I'm seeing is that typically with this sort of heavy metal style painting scheme, which is what you've you've done arguably, you'll typically see that the 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 shading separating the hair and the skin is a very very defined but sharp and and fine refined, line yeah it's very very refined what i'm seeing here is almost like a blend going from the skin into the hair and i think that's where it's killing a little bit of the contrast um i think the head is actually made to look smaller so the forehead has kind of shrunk down in surface area making the forehead seem smaller because so much of the top part of it is taken up by that blend yeah. and this sort of darker sort of tone that we see here um for me, actually, that would be the sort of brightest point of the head. Yeah, yeah. So having it as where the shading starts is is kind of not making perfect sense to me. I would have had the skin going all the way up to basically this line that I'm starting to draw up my mouse here. And then the, the shading that you've done, I think in terms of color choice is absolutely fine. Um, it's just having that mid-tone of the skin going all the way, pretty much all the way to the edge and just having a really, really fine, neat line going around the edge of the hair. It's like it's like he's had a bad spray tan. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think uh, as well as that, like, just adding some additional highlight stages to the hair all the way up to that sort of shading line. Um, go and have a look at some of the source material, like the box art miniatures. Have a look on GW's website super quick. You'll see pretty quickly what I mean. Um, and I think just doing those two things would add a massive, massive leap um, to how the, the face and the hair is presented. Yeah, definitely. The one thing that I noted from looking at the hair, and it's something I, I wanted to comment on, was just like, for example, where, where the top knot, the sort of like the metallic piece that centers around the top knot. So you've got this you got this thing here. And also if you look at the tail of the, the tails of the braided uh, bits of hair, you've got these almost like ringlets that just like the, the metallic ringlets. You've done them in copper, which um, which which is fine as a color, like, uh, but, but I think they get a bit lost in an opinionated statement. What I definitely would personally do if it was me, I'd probably do them in more of a metal, uh, maybe, maybe gold, but then it's still a yellow with the orange. I'd probably go silver with them or like a dark metal. Um, so then it really sort of breaks out that specific part of detail from the hair the the color you've used is very orange and, and obviously being copper it's, or, or brass it's it almost gets a little bit lost with the hair so i'd probably go for something a bit more a bit different so that you've got higher contrast on those areas but other than that that the, it's, it's really done well yeah really nicely painted miniature overall great effort just some small things that i think we could do some tweaks to, and i think it would uh, help sell the miniature a lot more definitely yeah, definitely okay and last up we have twisted tree who says first go a uh, vehicle uh, chapter is homebrew. We all have a homebrew chapter. Yep. Uh, I'm not going for a super clean, heavy metal style, trying a sort of comic book realism form uh, with some more gentle shading and selective edge highlights. So really cool homebrew color scheme. I like the use of the red as an accent color to the neutral tone gray. I think that works really well. One thing that both George and myself really liked about this when we first saw it is just the use of different colors for like lenses, gems, weapon warheads, things like that. I think you've done really great at using those colors and the lenses themselves are really executed really nicely. It's nice as well with um, something like a big, like a vehicle, because there can be kind of, I don't want to say boring, but that because it's so so much of one it's color. It's a big slab of armor. Adding like a little bits of visual interest like that just to break up the model, nice colors as well. Yeah. Um, I think really, really helps to make the miniature look more interesting, kind of draw your eye across it as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, For me, one of the things that I, I, I from looking at it, I, I, I think because obviously you've got gray on there, Metals and steels obviously have a not they're not grey, but they have a greyish hue to them in the sense of the spectrum of colour. What I would what I would definitely say is that um is that the metallics on this they kind of get a little bit lost. Now what I you could either go a lot brighter or you could go a lot darker with the metallics. And I think that'll add more visual contrast onto the miniature and also separate those things from the inherent colour of the actual tank. Um I personally would go darker because looking at the model that you've done, if you look at the metallics, there's some subtle weathering and stuff like you've done some subtle weathering on the front ball bars and you know, on, the, on the grav plates on the underneath. If you go really dark with them, almost like a black metal, black, you could even go black paint just with them and have them as like a ceramic kind of like grav plate or something like that. That would allow you to sponge with a bright silver to add like scratches and things like that onto them and still have that interest of weathering. That's interesting, actually, because I would have said to go a lot, lot brighter with this. I would have actually gone for a really, really bright steel metallic. Yeah, yeah. And then gone the opposite way of the weathering. So I would have done some like black sponging or some like uh, and mud and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I said, there's, there's, there's a great example of two different ways of doing it. It still gives the same objective as in adding more contrast onto the actual miniature and sectioning things out. Whatever way you do it, whichever way you prefer, it's just going to help to separate them from where they currently are. They do they do just personally, in an opinionated statement, get a little bit lost. And then just one final point to round out. I know you've said about doing like selective edge highlights, which I think is like perfectly fair. 
Um, not everyone wants to sit and do multiple stages of edge highlights on a model. I totally understand. Um, I think just in terms of like practicing your edge highlights, um, I think it's just something that we speak about quite often, actually. It's just the sort of overall line weight. So sort of the overall thickness. So if you look at this line over here in particular, for example, you can see it's really, really nice and sharp going the whole way across. But then it gets a little bit thicker in these areas. Yeah. And I think often what you see is when people are, are using the edge of the brush to highlight, which is often where the term edge highlight comes from, aside from being the edge of the panel itself, <laughs> people do this sort of side swipe with the brush rather than sort of a long stroke. If you over thin your paint just a little bit too much, or even if you have overloaded the brush ever so slightly, that's often when you'll find that it comes out uh, just a little bit thicker. Yeah. If you are going to go for that sort of side of the brush stroke, um, you can kind of treat it almost like dry brushing, where if you have sort of less paint on there, as you go across it, the surface that is touching the brush is going to be wicking the paint out and you're not going to have any of that kind of spill. You can see a little bit similarly with um, with this panel here. You've kind of got this like really, really, really sharp sort of thin part in the middle here, but it's a little bit thicker towards the edges. Um, I think if you did want to practice your edge highlighting, that's something that you could just potentially look into uh, refining just a little bit more. Um, and then finally as well, I think it's just sort of the overall edge highlight placement. If you look at the sort of sponsor on the side here, um, you can see that you've done sort of like full edge highlights all the way around and even like the sort of double edge highlight on this softer sort of divot on uh, where the metal is molded and then all the way around sort of the weapon casing as well. But other areas we've sort of skipped on that. So I think if you are going to do the, the lesser edge highlighting, I think be kind of more... Uh, consistent overall with where you choose to place those um because i think if you go quite heavy with it in some areas it makes other areas look more unfinished if that makes sense definitely overall fantastic scheme for a really cool homebrew chapter we'd love to know the name of the chapter so if you want to chuck that in in discord that'd be great um keep doing what you're doing and i hope all that feedback does help you massively to just really tighten up a few little areas but um but your gems and lenses look amazing so keep doing those as well as you are Okay, well, a massive thank you to all of our patrons who submitted for this episode of Critique Clinic. If you'd like your miniatures featured on a future episode and to get some feedback from myself and James, check the link in the description of this video. There'll be a link to our patron. And it's not only Critique Clinic that you gain access to, there's also hundreds of PDF tutorials and some videos on all sorts of techniques, miniatures and uh, color recipes, things like that as well. And that's updated every single week. And also on top of that, you'll also get some bonuses for the Paint Perspective podcast ad-free and extended episodes as well. Yeah, so a big thank you for watching this episode. I hope you've liked all the miniatures that we've shown and the feedback that we've given and that it helps you with your painting moving forward. We'll see you very soon on the next episode.